Super Smash Bros. is Nintendo's sixth best-selling franchise of all time, with over 26 million total series sales. But despite its hugely successful reputation and dedicated fan base, the Super Smash Bros. niche on YouTube is only recently gaining in popularity over the last few years. It was incredibly small in the days of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, with the biggest name in that scene probably being Pizza Dude Man Guy, who as of today has 13.5 thousand subscribers. But when Super Smash Bros. 4 came around, a new name burst into the scene with a crazy amount of momentum, Alpha Rad. Alpha was, and continues to be, a huge name within the Smash community. I've been keeping an eye on my own YouTube statistics, and around 20% of my own subscribers follow Alpha Rad. And although he's moved on to cover things besides just Super Smash Bros, I think that it would be really interesting to figure out how he got to where he is today. How did somebody break through such a small niche to become the largest creator in the scene with 2.3 million subscribers at the time of this recording? Let's get into it. John Jacob Rabin IV was born 25 years ago today on December 19th, 1995. From a young age, he developed his passion for creating videos, getting his first real start in 2007 around the age of 11. He started with things like this. This is Sparta! But after his best friend moved from their home state of Oklahoma to Wyoming, he began posting some of his early videos to YouTube. His first real foray into gaming came alongside his mild fame in Roblox under the name Pivot Warrior 2, having named the account after a stick figure animation software that was super popular in the mid to late 2000s. If any of you are too young to have missed out on the Pivot craze, it was fantastic. Man, those Jedi vs animations were so hyped back in the day, and it seems like they don't actually exist on YouTube anymore, so that sucks. And that Pivot animation forum was probably Probably my first real experience with social media. It's just really cool to know that Alpha Rad also used the program, but anyway, getting back to the video. While using this Pivot Warrior 2 alias, he was able to make a small name for himself in the Roblox community. But after being made fun of by some of his friends for playing the game, he dropped the game altogether and migrated over to live person videos. This era produced some of the finest media ever put to screen, such gems as SpaghettiOs infomercial or the Science Museum, which eventually transitioned into some Guitar Hero videos. Before this era, of pre-Alpha Rad uploading came to an end, and Jacob took a four-year break from uploading. Now, although there was a four-year downtime for posting itself, there were a few notable life events that happened here for Alpha Rad that would go on to shape much of his life and future YouTube career. For starters, in the eighth grade, Alpha began dating a girl named Fiorella. It was a beautiful relationship for the two weeks that it lasted, but then it came to an end in the way that all relationships must, by liking Coldplay so freaking much that you force their hand and get dumped over MySpace. But we'll come back to this relationship in a little bit. Also around this time, Jacob enrolled in a few high school classes to learn editing, cinematography, and other skills that pertain to video creation. Thinking that one day he'd become a director or a writer or something of that sort that would put him in the business of creating videos to entertain an audience. Following this passion, he applied to a prestigious and competitive videographer summer camp. And when I say prestigious, I mean it. Only 16 students out of the entire stake of Oklahoma were admitted to the program. In this camp, they flew out real-life directors, photographers, and dance instructors from all over the world to teach at this small camp in Oklahoma. This camp skyrocketed his abilities in terms of video editing, and upon his return, he found that he was streets ahead of the other people in his school. As he created more and more videos, though, he started to have some doubts about the video industry. If he was an editor, he would edit, and that's it. If he was a director, he'd direct, and that's it. And it seemed like there wasn't really much out there to give him the kind of creative control that he was looking for with video creation. Around this time, though, in late 2013, Alpha got back into YouTube creation when he created a Let's Play channel with his friend Major, going through titles like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. But he was unable to find the kind of traction that he was really hoping for with this, and the channel shortly died. It wasn't long after this, though, that the Alpha Rad channel that we know and love today was born. Although the channel bore the same name, it looked radically different than the content that we know and love today. He originally started the channel with two of his good friends, including someone named Major Duncan that continued to collaborate with Alpha on many projects into the future. I wasn't able to find out who that final friend in the group was, but given that both Alpha Rad and Major went on to achieve internet fame, I can only assume that we're going to see this final friend achieve newfound fame above both Alpha Rad and Major as he appears alongside Moist Critical in the inevitable Hunger Games remake, or something like that. Anyway, 
together, these friends tried a variety of different content on the channel. But one of the more notable ones was called Media Matters, where they broke down prominent video games in 60 seconds or less. Now, I'm going to show some of this footage because it's really fascinating to me. Despite this being really early content without the best lighting or camera, the editing still holds up better and more intensive than a wide swath of YouTubers out there today. And this is likely due in part to his previous experience with video creation and the editing camp that I talked about. But this sort of intentionality and storytelling done through these visuals are really important to highlight because I do think that they formed a foundation on which the entire Alpharad channel was built. These early videos were all in good fun, but nothing felt super similar to the Alpha Rad that we know today. That said, the groundwork had been laid and everything was about to change. Super Smash Bros. had always been a favorite series of Alphas as he grew up. He began as a Melee player, which shows his excellent taste, but he also dabbled in Project M, and those two games went on to shape much of his early Smash Bros. experience. That is until July 22nd, 2014, when he uploaded a video titled Melee Got Hacked. This video featured himself and Major providing commentary on what's either a playable sandbag or a very, very early version of Little Mac. They have about the same viability, so it's kind of hard to tell. But the sheer dominance exuded by the sandbag must have had an awakening impact on Alpha Rad, as he soon joined his very first Super Smash Bros. tournament, competing in both Project M and Smash 4. These games are very different, but were also both very important to Alpha Rad's history. As someone who used to be part of the Melee and Project M scene, there really isn't too much out there like it. There's a real sense of of camaraderie and rivalry at the same time that keeps everyone competing and growing together. In my experience, it's almost impossible to get to a competitive level in Project M and not fall in love with the game and the attention to detail in it. And this game went on to bring about what must be one of the most fulfilling experiences in Alpha Rad's life, when he won a Project M doubles tournament by himself as Wario Man. People don't walk away from that without being a changed man on the other side. I would imagine that between Project M and Melee, Alpha Rad grew a love for the series that continues even today. But like I mentioned, there's another game that holds a lot of significance, Super Smash Bros. 4, a game that likely went on to change his whole life. He stated that he's loved just about every Smash game and felt the desire to make videos on the topic. But he ran into a similar problem that I found when creating videos for older Smash games, which is that the aspect ratio for Melee is all wrong and you can't capture HD footage in Project M or Melee. So after obtaining an HD video capture card, he made the choice to capture Smash 4 footage. In his first 10 videos or so, Alpha Rad had to work his head off trying to figure out a style and a growth method that suited him. Behind the memes and laugh in the videos was an intentionality that was looking for the best possible way to entertain people. He'd been on record saying that he even got many of his early subscribers by joining sub for sub trains or even going on Omegle and matching with people who shared similar interests and asking them to watch his videos and subscribe. But throughout all of this battle for growth, the channel eventually stumbled into a video series that would change its course forever. How to Play 101. How to Play 101 was a series that was simple in concept, create funny montages and quick edits over Smash 4 gameplay footage, and then provide amusing commentary through text on the screen. The series eventually exploded, and it's here that we can find one of the first big markers for Alpha Rad's rise. It's not terribly uncommon for creators to have a hit video one day, but I've found that not very many people know how to capitalize off of that and turn it into a format for actual growth. I've seen channels that get literally over a million views in one video, but then capitalize on it so poorly that they struggle to even break a thousand views afterward. Alpha Rad is a good example of effectively utilizing this as he doubled down and made more and more and more of these montages. And as the numbers of these videos increased, so did his subscribers. I remember watching these videos when I was really trying to get into competitive Smash and being really confused because I thought that they were legitimate tutorials for the characters that were just going over my head. People had done Smash compilations before, but Alpha Rad put his own spin on it and capitalized on it in a way that no one else really had. And the waves of this influence sent from the series can be felt even today. There are a ton of Smash montages out there, and a vast plurality of them likely have their roots in Alpha Rad's early work. Even people that I know in real life are creating Smash montages that seem reminiscent to this early work. The Smash 4 How to Play 101 series has 44 videos and 42 million views spread across them, and that's just for Smash 4. He went on to attempt the series with other franchises as well as Smash Ultimate, and has gained millions of views from those as well. Heck, just his playlist page for the how to Play 101 series has over 5 million views. These videos were absolutely critical to his success, but I imagine that it must have left him with a sort of love-hate relationship with the
the series. In one sense, he was finally starting to see a growth that he'd been chasing for nearly a decade. On the other hand, this type of montage video came with a meme label for the channel that Alpharad would struggle to shake off, even still attempting to do so today. As the series and his channel subsequently grew in size, Alpha was still unable to dedicate his life fully to video creation on YouTube. He was going through school as a full-time student at the time, and before he was able to go full-time on YouTube, he had to do his time as a head of sales and marketing at a regional photography company. And this is another lesson that we can take from observing the growth of his channel. There are some YouTubers out there who see success and immediately quit their job to go full-time on YouTube. Harley Morenstein from Epic Mealtime comes to mind. And while this does occasionally work out, it's a pretty big risk. And I think that the example of moderation portrayed by Alpharad here would be an excellent example to a lot of people that are aspiring content creators. Don't dive headfirst into a pit of fire until you're absolutely sure that there's a net there to catch you. Sure enough though, after enough time, he began to make the same amount of money from YouTube as he was making at his photography company. And so he made the switch to being a full-time content creator on YouTube. And with all of this foundation behind him, his education and filmmaking, the newfound growth of the channel, and the switch to becoming a dedicated YouTuber, Alpha's channel was about to break into a new era and hit a turning point. It was September 6, 2016, and Alpharad posted a video titled, Overwatch Kunai with a Chain, which marked a turning point in his channel. Rather than being a montage-focused Super Smash Bros. channel, he began a shift to a more improv comedy-styled Let's Play channel. He began experimenting with new games such as Overwatch, as well as new series such as his incredibly popular Steam Cleaning, Story for Glory, Clickbait, and his Not series, which contained his first ever videos to beat out the views of his original How to Play series. And around this time as well, he came full circle and started a Let's Play streaming channel with his friends Major Duncan and a few others. And I don't know, to me this seems like a really cool return to his roots, fulfilling an idea that kind of died earlier on due to a lack of success. And past this, he also explored some other activities outside of his channel, such as assisting the creator Magic Scrumpy to create a mod of Melee called Silly Melee, as well as dabbling in music creation with his two albums aptly titled Alpharad Makes an Album and Thank You. Through exploring these new interests, creating new channels, and refining his video format, Alpharad and the channel eventually formed into what we know and love today. Although, some things have changed. For example, he ended up leaving Friends Without Benefits on good terms in 2018, he got married to the same girl who made him blue because of yellow, and he founded his own band called The Ace of Hearts. The Alpharad we see today seems to very much be a product of all those classes, video edits, and attempts at content creation that helped him out along his way. So where does that leave us today? Today. Why are people subscribing to his channel in droves, and why have they stuck around after all of these years? As I said earlier, I think the real key to Alpha Rad's success is what seems to be a personal driving philosophy of his, passion. Although many of his early videos had a lot of elements similar to memes, they were always created with intent. He's gone on record saying that every single zoom, cut, or edit he makes is done very intentionally, each one being done for a very specific purpose. And he takes a ton of pride and puts a ton of work into his main Alpharad channel. He's also gone on record saying that he schedules his content way in advance so that if he's ever getting burned out, he'll have a buffer to relax in order to maintain the passion for his channel, a lesson that I personally really need to take to heart as I've had to battle with burnout myself. It seems to be this fire inside of him that keeps pushing him through all of these years. The Alpharad channel was created in 2014, hit 500,000 subscribers on July 9th, 2017, which was followed by 1 million subscribers on November 22nd, 2018. And as of the date of this recording, he has 2.29 million subscribers, which makes him easily the biggest Smash YouTuber by a large margin if you can even call it that. And I think that's the true success to Alpharad's channel, is that he isn't a Smash channel, he isn't a montage channel, and he isn't a meme channel. The true appeal of his channel is Alpharad himself. It's an Alpharad channel that just so happens to feature Smash, montages, or memes. Alpha's expressed in the past that he thinks of himself as someone who pours his heart into everything he does, but still has to deal with something called the imposter syndrome. The imposter syndrome is something that affects nearly all of us at one time or another. Whether it be in school, parenthood, work, or YouTube, it creates the feeling of not having earned our accomplishments, or being worthy of our success, or ultimately putting on a facade for everyone to see while your true self hides beneath a mask. Virtually everyone will experience this at one point or another. I know that I've experienced it myself, even on my small channel, and as I attempt to create a similar kind of growth that Alpharad has seen. But seeing someone with the reach of Alpharad go through it makes me feel less alone in these insecurities, and I imagine it does the same for thousands of people. 
When it boils down to its roots, people don't watch Alpharad because he creates cool videos, does fun edits, or has dubiously named Amiibo and a gang named after a Sesame Street character. We watch him because we relate. He and his fanbase have a supportive culture of getting through life with comedy, but when someone's in need, they set those jokes aside and band together. He's one of those content creators that I just watch and feel like I could instantly get along with, be friends with, or just play Smash with, and I think a lot of people feel that same way. He's not a meme or some extraordinary person who's at an unattainable, unreachable level. He's just a guy like the rest of us who's an internet funny man and saw incredible growth as a result. And that's why so many of us are drawn to the channel. He feels accessible relatable, and like someone we all want to be around. When you create videos as long as Alpha Rad has, I imagine that you lose a part of yourself in the process. It's got to be isolating to not know if people are talking to you for who you are as a person, or for the number of subscribers next to your channel name. But as a direct result of this sort of sacrifice of self he's had to go through over the last few years, I think that this content has ultimately helped a lot of people through some really hard times and even helped people find themselves along the way. And those are my thoughts on how Alpha Rad got to where he is today, as well as a little bit of history for the channel. I had to comb through so many different interviews and random videos to get all of this, so I hope it comes off as informative and not creepy. But anyway, hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and leave a comment to let me know who you want me to talk about next. Click on the right to watch my final analysis series of videos, or click the video on the left to see something that YouTube handpicked just for you. And until next time, stay smashing.